Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. I am joined today by Connor the Magnificent. Now, you've come up from Wisconsin. Yes. So this is, you're just like on vacation or something? Yeah. Okay. And you expressed a desire to do an equipment autopsy. I did. And you brought three different things. Yes. And out of those we picked this. Yes, we did. So what's the story on this? Um, my dad teaches middle school. Okay. And the tech department threw it out. So we picked about five of them up and I brought one. Did any of them work? Nope. No, so but you, you plugged no. them in, you tried, yeah. is dead. All it's, right. it's the light, the bulb, that's like, the projector's like $300. You can replace bulbs, those. But the bulb costs as much as the projector, Yeah. and they can just buy new ones. That's so why did. we have a lot of dead projectors that we don't have bulbs for. So this is a Panasonic PT-LB5 1NT, and you and I get to take it apart. Yes, we do. All right, so as always, we flip it over. And this is pretty much entirely a job for a number two Phillips, but let's... Let's open this up. Oh, that's just a little vent. Yeah. All right, so this is the bulb here? I do believe. You're the one who's got half a dozen of them. You're supposed to know this stuff. Yeah, well. I expect better of you. You're supposed to know this stuff. Half of the stuff we've taken apart with a hammer. <coughs> and dropping it's full off of dust. Building. Yeah. Hammers? Yes. We don't take things apart nicely. That's why we can't have nice things. All right, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to change the bulb on this, but I'm just going to take screws out and see what happens. That's my entire I mean, plan. We don't, we don't have to put it back together, so... Well, we've got that going for us. What about these here? Those are security torques, so I think they don't mean for you to take those apart readily. But we want to. Well, we will. And I've got the driver for them. But I'm just trying to figure... It says push. I pushed. Nothing <laughs> happened. I am entirely not impressed with this. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have to fight this hard to change a bulb in a projector. I pushed on it. All right, I'm just going to take everything apart. <laughs> I'll bet we get that bulb out in a few minutes, but probably not through the means they're expecting. I think it'd be a lot easier if we had uh, instructions. We've got instructions. See these little arrows here? See little tiny arrows? Take screw out. That means, that means <coughs> there's a screw there that holds the thing together, and you should take that out. I mean, the little arrow just points right there, so, okay. I'm on it. You want to use the blue one? Here, we got, we got the good blue oh, one. Goodness. We've got them in colors. i got a gold one, too, if you want. I never use the gold one, though. It's not special. Blue's my favorite color, so I just tend to grab that one the most. It's like... I think that's all of them. It's like... One Here. Okay. That's every screw. Ooh. Gets excited. Um, all right. You just hammered these apart, didn't you? Yep. So you have no idea where the seam is or anything. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to grab a delicate seam popping tool. Oh, this looks quite lovely. This is a precision, delicate operation. Which means one? we use a little hammer. Here. No. For your, for your safety, I'll give you the big hammer. And you'll need a, a substantial screwdriver. There. All right. I'm going to go on this side. Be, be gentle. Do we want to... What? That's not a seam, so... Are you sure that's not a seam? That was loud. That's totally a seam. There? Yeah, look. Right. No, oh, like this, this is a seam. So we need... Hey, 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 watch this. Come Ooh, back like this. That's a good idea. Lever that up. Now stick yours in there. Okay, now pop it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, watch this. If I get in over here, we can just walk this right around. Don't, 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 because you don't know what's in there. So you want to stay back like that and just pop it, and we can walk all the way around and just get that right out, just like that. See? Now there's tiny stuff. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to just pound your way in. You can gentle, subtly. All right, now you're gonna need a, uh... all 
Here. Maybe this one. And just start taking out all the screws on top. We can move this back a bit where we're at. And just take out all the screws because it all comes. And then we'll start taking individual pieces apart. See the trick here? Hold the screwdriver like this. Okay. Use this hand to break it loose, like that. And then spin down here, because you can spin it a lot faster. Yeah. Then you just zip right through the whole thing. Ooh, I found a thing. I found a thing. Look at this. It's a wireless SD card. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. Saving that. Yeah. All right. You got screws left? Not over here. No? That are exposed. What about on the side? See any on any sides anywhere? Hey, I found the bulb. Took a little while. I'm just taking out every screw I see. All right, so explain that part. If you're going to take it apart, you got to explain what it is. So this is buttons for okay. the controls. So you got to hold it really still. Top. Brace your hand down here. Hold it really still and angle it like that. There, see? So explain what you got there. Don't move it around. Hold, so hold it still. So this is buttons for the top controls that look like That's that either. ring switch with yeah. enter in the middle? That's this? This is the board that has the buttons on it. Okay, and, and you can see the ring switch. Buttons, are they just contacts? Well, these are, these are legit buttons. They're like, push one. They're not clicking. Okay, they, they are, are if you like push really hard. Yeah, but. they're clicking in the middle. So that's a, that's a legit little baby button. <laughs> little baby button. All right, I think I've got a speaker on this side. I need a smaller screwdriver. That one's a bit smaller. There's even like a little waveguide and everything for the speaker. That's, that's hardcore. You pull that out, and that's going to lower the size of that <laughs> massive speaker. Yeah, teachers would that try, to play, house. try to play movies on these things, and they would make the entire class like it would. Oh, that'd make you crazy. Oh, oh it's, it's, it's insane. All right, so I got another screw down here. There's lots of little mounting brackets for fans and Ooh. stuff. What? These are fan These are going to be interesting. This is the, you know how to get them out? Well, pull this. Down here, the, the light part. Here, look. Pull this part forward. This little thing up there, and then back. Yeah. You just pop that. These go down to the... Or you just break that part entirely off. Yeah, there you I go. I think this is the thing that does the color on the light. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the light out. Um, That's not happening. All right, let's take this board out. So this is... I think that's wireless. Yeah? It's processing well here. Well, take a look. See if you can identify Let's the chips. Get the, uh, what do you learn about it? Well, there's a... That's just a thing. So do we know what kind of projector this is yet? You miss screws. Where? Right there. Right out in the middle. Right there. That big, giant screw holding everything together, slowing us down. Well, we have chips. You miss the screws on the back. Hold the whole plug panel on, man. I don't know about I you. I didn't see that one. I don't okay. know about you. You can't take the top off till you take the back thing off. There's a whole system here. You're messing with my system. The internet's gonna judge you. They're gonna comment. I know. I'm. They're they're gonna comment. And was... YouTube commenters are very kind, loving, generous people. Gracious, really. Sure. I've, I've they're seen. They're full of love. I, I read comments. Very delicate operation. All right, explain what you got there. Show so, me what you got. These are inputs for. I think it. I think it takes two inputs. Does it say on the back? It says on. No, it doesn't. It says, right there. It says on this. There. That'll tell you everything you need to know. It takes two computers. In. Well, it takes one in, and then it says what one. Yeah. Computer out. in, computer two in and out. All right. And then it has. So here, here, here. Here. Show them. Oh, it's upside down. There. So that's, that's computer one in, computer two in, one out. 
This is S video in, video in, audio in, computer audio in, variable audio out, all kinds of stuff. And then serial over here, which is probably a remote control for the projector. Fancy things. But now we're into the cool stuff because this, yeah. this is the optics line and that's the, mm -hmm. the, the whole beam line here is where I think it's really cool. Um, so we start at the, the lamp, which Jeez. is the most sturdily installed. Ah, I got it. See, because you were supposed that's to pull on the bottom. That's a cool looking lamp. That's really neat. So this is just a little like halogen lamp. That costs as much as a projector. It costs as much as a thing, yeah. Now from there. I believe this is the, it looks like a higher voltage <coughs> power supply for the lamp there. Like a big HID like, power supply type thing? It's got a bunch of know. stuff that says it's dangerous in there. So. Oh cool, if it's dangerous in there, let's go in. I like the danger. Now. There might be charged capacitors. There might be. Mm, for so. safety, I should let you go in there first. I'll work on taking the beam light apart. I'll start, since you're going into the high voltage part, I'll disconnect the ground. That See if you can get this whole module out in one. Like there's a screw down here. I'll bet there's, there's a, a screw on cables. each corner. Yeah, there's a screw back here. Look down on the corners and see if you see a screw in there. We're just holding these fans in. Okay, I'm gonna take these out. Okay. Yeah, that gets the power supply unit out. So I'm gonna work my way through this. Screw. Wait, you better figure it out. The whole world's watching you right now. Yeah, I know. You like. Think of all the people that are watching you right now. I mean, look, look around the room. All these people with cameras. And they record everything. Plus, you're going out live right now. Over on, on that one, you're out on the live stream. You can, you can see us on that monitor back there. The whole world's watching you right now. All your friends, everybody you've ever met, they're all watching you. I, I don't think it's that many. It's everybody. They're watching and they're judging you. Interesting 12 volt fans. They got nice little ducts on them too. Yeah, they. Like, and they're vented on the side. Yeah, because they blow right into like. Well, stuff that's... which way do these blow? Look at the fans. Which way do they? Which way do they blow? And so it's like that. So they go. So they pull in. Were the they mounted here. like that, or were they mounted like they this? They were mounted like this, actually. So, so they, they pull they blow out. out. They exhaust. Yeah, they exhaust. Okay. I think I've got that. I've totally, it's glued in there. Yeah, they do really nice stuff to this. It's very well constructed. Yeah. I mean, for being just a cheap little projector, it's actually really well built. Somebody put a lot of work into this. I took that screw out. Yeah, I totally took that screw out. There we go. All right, I have the entire beam line, so that's that's where we're going to finish. Ooh. That's going to be the really cool part. This Ooh, nice. that's there's, sexy. There's uh, three of them. Look at that. Where? They're mounted. These are blowers? Yep. Really? Yep. I've used them for... Oh, there's little ducts and everything. Yeah. It's got like a whole HVAC system in here. That's neat. Okay, where does this go? You don't know. Down a little capacitor? You don't know. Over there. No, just... Well, there's a bunch of little caps down here, and I'm just taking out the screws that hold that little cap block in. But I got to get under. Look at that. The little air duct things are cool. I wanted to use this, like, I, I do model railroading in HO scale. Oh, you do that too? Yeah. I, I do, do that. I do, yeah? It's, HO scale I'm, or what? Then I'm going to have you sign a train car because I have one in the car. Oh, well, hey, that's cool. Well, you can do graffiti on that. But yeah, I do HO scale. I was, I was, I'm designing a house. I've been designing a house forever. And I got looking at the container home stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to like mock up building a house. Mm. And I wanted to go and buy just like a dozen of the little, because you can get containers in yep. HO scale. And then I saw that but they were like 20 bucks a piece. Exactly. And I'm like, like I'm not like, going to buy a dozen of those mm -hmm. at 20 bucks a piece. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. There are like two little blowers in there. Pop them out and it, it's all happy. Okay, so, so you got two blowers. Oh, it comes up from below and then it sends it down the ducts. Okay, that's why we had the air filter on the bottom at the mm -hmm. start. 
The, it, it comes a very good job. up and, well, it's, it's trying. It's, where's, the, where's the little filter we can? The little filter thing? It's right done there. a decent amount. Yeah, Look and it sits, it sits like that. So that's how the filter sits. Okay, so now that's we have cool. this thing. And there's this blower. We got lots of little blowers. Did you get, hey, you want to take the screws out first, maybe? I don't know about you and screws. Don't don't be scared of them. Well, I the last time I took these apart was a while ago with a hammer. With a hammer. <laughs> with a hammer. See, so is, we've done this whole thing. We haven't had to break anything yet. Ooh, what? So these these are shiny. What? They're well, not like yeah. one. Oh, they. Oh, well, interesting. They're kind of shiny. A little schmutz. What's this? What is that? I don't know. But now I want to know. Well, that's. I'm gonna take it out a, this way. Might be. Would it be a fuse? Could be a fuse. Could yeah. be a temperature sensor. It might be a temperature fuse. It might like if it, it got too hot. Yeah, it might be close. a thing for like if. Well, it's right next to the lamp. So it probably is temperature. Well, let's. It's a fuse. You can see that. Well, let's let's open it up. See, we don't know what it is. But we've got a couple ideas. It could be a fuse. It could be a temperature we sensor. We can look up a part number. Or is that we what the probably won't even have to. This says. 250 volts, M4, 222A UMI, 5 amps, 115C. So this is what I think. I think when this hits 115 degrees centigrade that it pops. I think it's rated to sink 5 amps through it. And you go more than that and it'll probably burn up. But I, th I think this is a sensor for heat. And if the yeah. lamp gets, like if the lamp catches on fire, this melts and shuts it off. That's my theory. And given that this what? is located right, like you've got the power supply here, so, right? So, yeah. So you've got the power supply. And this has its own fuse. Mm -hmm. So you've got the power supply. And then you come to this side and it's got stuff. This is, this is the part of the power supply here. This is the power supply that feeds the light because these, this is the plug for the light. And this is the power supply that feeds everything else. And I think this is just a thermal cutoff. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll set that aside. So what do you think this is? Because this was sitting right here. Might be another little thermal. It might be a thermal sensor because it was also right next to that. And it might go to the fans. Might I think it's a light. Them. I think it's a light. Where's, you want to shove it in the power supply? We could. You know what I need back here that I don't have? A wire stripper? A really good pair of strippers, yeah. Ooh. It's on very nice silicone wire. That's really weedly. So what's this right? What is this light rated for? What voltage? It doesn't want AC or DC. It doesn't say anything on. It's a little, little bitty thing, but it's encased in a like this isn't like in a, a tube. It's in a solid block. It's a diode. Yeah. It looks kind of like it's an ear diode. So we're just gonna assume it wants DC. No, here, yeah. All right, you do that, and you're plugged in for DC. Okay, you ready? Yep. All right, well, this knob here gives you 0 to 15 volts, so. It's not exploding yet. It's not. I don't think it's going to. You sure? OK. <laughs> I have every, every faith in you. <laughs> All right, so we don't need that. We don't need any of that. Um, let's get into the cool parts. Yeah, you, you, you really should have we, we, we make a mess when we do this. That's always the best. Now, we have the beam line. This is the cool so, parts. Yeah, this is where the light, where's the light? You got the light? Here's the light. All right, so the light shoots into there and, and then out. So we know this is in, that's the out, and somewhere in between, because that's just a light. And that's just a lens. So somewhere in between, they got to put an image on it. So we got to find the part with the image. And I think it's that. these three. I think we're going to have a three color system. So we got all the screwdrivers. Let's take it apart gently. You got a little one? You want a little screwdriver here. You take that one. 
and do that screw and that screw and this screw and this screw. And I'll do the three big ones. You do the four little ones, I'll do the three big ones. Okay, and then do that one. And is that it? Please? I think that's it for screws. Now we just gotta be careful and take them out one piece at a time. So let's start at this end. And, oh no, the whole, the whole top comes off. Well, they get to see the whole thing at the same time. Let's not screw it up. Okay, so we open this up, and now we can see the whole beam line. So we start out. Where was this? Because it just came that? out. I don't know. I think it was attached to the top. We're just gonna. I don't know where that goes, but it looks like a polarizing filter. I think that's what it is. We'll test in a minute. If we find another one, I'll show you a really cool way to find out if this is a polarizing filter, but we'll set that right there for now. So we start out, and we've got very this, pieces of glass. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so that basically chops the image into little squares, and you can see it's thicker at the outside than in the middle. Mm -hmm. So this makes light go out like that. It spreads out the beam. And then the next one in line, is the exact opposite. It so this expands the beam and this pushes it together. And when you look through the two of them, it gets really cool. Yeah. Okay. So we've got those. And then... So do you think some of these things might be useful in the laser lab? Oh, I'm sure they will. I wanna... I haven't gotten we've got yet. a metal grid and this, which is vertical stripes of weirdness and it's they're kind of dichroic. And then we go into this, which is a convex, convex lens. See, lenses can either be convex, they go out, or just what is it if they go in? Concave. Okay, and what is it if it's straight? Is it just plano. 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 plano? plano, yeah. So you'll have like plano convex, plano concave, 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 yeah. So then we go into this. Now this is cool. This is a beam splitter. Some of the beam hitting this gets reflected off and goes this way. Some of it, Some just, of it goes just goes straight through. Do so, we have the same thing right here? Um, yeah, I think we do. But I'm, I'm trying to do them in order. So we'll take out this beam splitter. And if you look through it, everything turns yellow. OK, so it splits so it, it by frequency. A light, a light filter like takes out kind the other of, two yeah. colors? It reflects certain colors and passes others. And then we have lots and lots more, like this is a little, little convex, convex lens, a little convex lens. A bunch of shiny little things. Yeah, there's, there's, oh, you forgot one. Where did I forget one? You forgot the screw right here. Well, your hand was in the way. I know, it's entirely my fault. I'm so mean to you. All right, so we'll take out this beam splitter. Okay, now look at the, look through that one and what color do you see? It's like an orange color. Now what if you look through this one first? On this side, yeah. We see green. Oh. So it changes depending on it's which filters turquoise. you look through. Mm. It shouldn't matter by turning it. That's, that's a different thing. That's polarization. Um, so then we've got that one. Now look through that one. It's not like it's glass or anything. Here, let me get that. Uh, it's, not, it's not like it's delicate bits of precision glass or anything. All right, now look through that and this and see what you get. It's more purple. Okay. Now what happens if we add this one? It's a very dark red. Yeah. So you're getting red, purple, blue, green, depending on the colors. So what this does is separates the light out by wavelengths frequency and so we keep oh now remember I, I think this is a polarizing filter so here's how you check you hold this up and this and we can see through it right mm -hmm. so if you turn it 90 degrees see how it gets dark, dark. yeah that means those are polarizing filters because it's only letting the light it only let, yep and in, in phase yep 
So we go over into this corner, and we've got another one of those cool. Oh, that's just a mirror. Yeah, that's just mirrors. a straight-up mirror. And there's one in that corner too, I believe. Or wait, where? is that the one you took out? No, right there's there's yeah. one here. Yep. So we've got another mirror. There's a lot of really good optics in here. There's right. another little lens here. Right. We have to pull this out. This All right, is, we'll set that aside. That's the cool bit. Here, you pull those out. This is another polarizing filter, I believe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It and then is. a focusing lens. Now what's Ooh, that this one? One's, is this? That's pretty. It is. That's convex plano. It looks a little concave. Is it? I think it might no, be. No, no, it's, it's straight. It's Look, straight. you can tell by you lay it on something, see? It, and there's no gap. No gap, yep. All right, and the rest is just collimating, focusing, projection lens, nothing special here. Um, so that's, this is all the cool, there's a lot of optics in this little tiny space. Now this is where, all right, so what we're doing is we take the light beam in, we split it into three separate beams by color, and we have red, green, and blue. And you can tell on here because we have red, green, green and, and blue. blue. And these give us three little, I'm guessing these are LCDs. I think this is an LCD projector just by you know other clues in it. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out how to get these off. I believe that you can just slide them. Or those really tiny screws. They don't appear to be screws. Oh, yep, just pops just right pops off. off. Okay, so. Here, now explain that to people. Show them what they're looking at. I'll take the other two off while you're doing that. Well, what exactly is it? It's an LCD. Well, it's an LCD. It's a little, are you familiar with the FPV stuff? Like first person view. Yeah, the like goggles and that, like the, the yeah. quadcopters and stuff. Like those little tiny, Yeah, it's just like that. All right. So it's a little so LCD screen. It's a little LCD screen. And in your goggles, you'd have one of these in front of each eye mm -hmm. out a little ways, right? But in this, it's just a little tiny LCD screen. So that, the light, yeah. So when the light shines through it, it this, you see a picture. Mm -hmm. And these are special LCD screens. They're, they're ruggedized. Hey, I managed to do all that, and I only broke two pieces of optics on there. So that's not bad. Um, deep inside here. I'm going to try and get it out, and it's not going to be easy. But there's something really awesome in here. Is it a? It's going to take me some mojo to get it out. Is it a triangular object? I don't think so. I think there's a cube prism in here, mm -hmm. and I would like very much to get it out intact. That's kind of so cracked. That's what I'm going to try and do. Yeah, some some of these didn't didn't come out willingly. If it's if it's cracked, we'll just throw it away. But this is entirely held together with little bits of very expensive tape. And all right, I need careful with that. Isn't that neat? Yeah, it is. I think it's a cube prism. So my mission here is to get it out without, without destroying it. it. Yeah. So and the trick is breaking everything around it. Without breaking in it. a controlled, delicate manner, without destroying the actual object of our attention. So you do HS scale trains. Yes. What are you into? Um, like what? Like stuff? do you have a specific railroad time period? I can't pick a railroad, so I just have the 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 most expensive thing I have is a. Intermountain ES44 DC. Okay. Which is one of the new engines that has DCC and sound in it. And it's just in a GE demo paint. It's nothing yeah. special. Okay. Yeah. I have a couple Norfolk Southern engine, or one, and then I have a bunch of Milwaukee Road stuff because we're in Wisconsin. And I have Wisconsin Central stuff too. I understand. I, I do almost exclusively CNO stuff. Just peak? Yeah. Do you have any steam locomotives or just diesels? I have I have a couple steam, but mostly diesel stuff. Um, I don't get into the old timey stuff, um, but a couple DCC, nothing major. I had when we lived in uh, Keizu, the original Geek House had the entire attic was a giant train layout, and we moved. And the problem with train layouts is they don't move well, yeah. and and I knew that. So instead of trying to move the train layout, I took Almost all the rolling stock and packed it up, but all the buildings and one really good big solid train I left up there 
and I wrote a note, like wrote out a whole letter of how to clean everything. I left a controller, it was all wired up, and I left all the instructions of how to clean everything, how to use it, all the basics, and I left it in a letter, and I put it up there, and I sealed the door shut, and we moved away. And the goal was someday, a kid your age is gonna, because that's what kids your age do, is you move into a new house, and, oh my God, there's an attic, I gotta explore that. And how cool would it be if you just opened, you know, move into this new house in a new neighborhood and you open up the attic and there's this whole world up there. And it was a, it was a whole thing. Like I had the, the Walters Cornerstone series I want to get models. some of those buildings because I oh, have no buildings. Oh man, I had a million of them. I had a million of them. They're just, they're just so expensive. They are, but the Cornerstone series isn't bad. And there's a steel mill thing that's really expensive oh, if you thing. just do it all at once. Oh, but if you that. do one piece at a time, it's like 50 bucks. And, and you get a whole thing, and it takes you weeks to put it together. And yeah, and I just I just still, because before I did planes, I did trains. And so it was where, just, where are we going to put thing. the train out here? I don't know. I've been trying to figure that out since we got the building. All right, I think this is as far down you as could, we're going to get with this. You could run it around the, all the rooms in the basement. The problem is the turning radius. Like, HO is a pretty narrow turning radius, but you still have a turning radius. And it and has to be decent, because, I mean, you can get away with a lot smaller ones on O scale. That's one of the things I've learned. Oh. I can do a full circle of O scale inside of a, the smallest turn radius I can run anything on in HO. It's really weird. In O? Yeah. O scale's bigger because, than HO. But it's you twice have, as big as if HO. You have the, the o That's what HO stands for, is half O. Yeah, I know. But if you have some of the O27 stuff, which is just a little bit smaller, which is mainly what we do, Okay. it's... The turning, the full diameter is 27 inches okay. instead of being 22 for just the radius. Huh. Yeah. All right, I'm curious about that. So there's our thing. It's a go, cube prism. Can we go shine a laser into this later? I think we should. I don't think we're going to get it as part of the video, but I think but, you and I need to go to the laser lab and shine a laser through that just because we can. Because I haven't seen a laser lab yet. Well, we'll have to do that. I'll make a video about it. All right, I think we're done now. I think that's the autopsy. Well, that was fun. Did you have fun? Yeah, Enjoy I did. it? All right, was it everything you dreamed? Yeah. All right, so this you've is... you've watched these at home. Yes. Now you've come and actually done one. What What is different having actually been here? You're not looking, well, I mean, you can look at yourself on the display up there. It's but... kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, You can is. see your hand, too, if you do that. Yeah. See, it's movie magic. Yeah. See, for us, we're in this little tiny box on a thing, and for the rest of the world, that's all they see. They don't see all the people and yeah, the lights and it's, the screens. It's and, actually yeah. really, it's really cool <laughs> to actually be here. So you all should come. Not at sure. the same time. Yeah. Don't come on come out. Us, check us out. at the same time. Well, thank you for coming, sir. Yes. All it right. was fun. You've done your autopsy, mm -hmm. and, and you, can, you can take that home. Put that on a shelf. Put it in your train layout. No, we can, we're going to leave this here. Okay. You guys have, I, well, I don't we have we got to take it to the laser lab then. Yeah. All right. You guys have fun. I'm Chris. And I'm Connor. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.